people. Some countries have more people than more. Yeah, more people than others. If you have more people, are you going to be a richer country or a poorer country? Hands, mm. right? So maybe not number of people, but maybe the education. Do you mean? Okay, anything on the other reason? Natural resources. Oil. Oil. What other natural resources? Did you watch the movie Mad Max? No. <laughs> hmm? uh, yes. What resources were important in that movie? Water and oil. Water and oil, right? The two you mentioned. Well, water. Some Ireland has too much water. <laughs> some countries, right? Other resources. Mainly we can have minerals. Australia has a lot of minerals, metals, and so on. Okay? Does Korea have a lot of resources? Natural resources? No. No, so what does it have to do? Yes, the same as Ireland. It doesn't have any natural resources. So they have to find a way to use the human resources, right? So the US can't get any natural resources from Ireland or Korea, but they're interested in human resources. A lot of smart people from Ireland go to the US. A lot of smart people from Korea go to the US. Uh, any other reason? Technology. Technology. Or access to technology. Do you know that Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, is making some projects to make the access to the internet for more and more people around the world? Um. Okay, any other reason? Social infrastructure. Social infrastructure. Infrastructure? Anything else? Corruption. Hmm? Corruption. Policy, corruption. Anything else? Okay, anything? What can we do? So discuss with your partner. Uh, what can we do to make the countries which have low economy to improve? Why are some countries poor while other countries are rich? Some countries have better education, some countries have more resources, some countries have better technology, some countries have better infrastructure. Some countries have less corruption, some countries have better government. And there are more reasons we'll look at later. Right? But the next question is, how can these countries improve to become, how can we get these countries to improve these things and become economically wealthy country? Anybody give me any ideas? How can the countries narrow the gap? Uh, 
there's a big gap between some countries, yes? For instance, if countries invest in development, they may find that there is uh, uh, oil in their country or some minerals mm -hmm. or something else they didn't know about before. Oh, you mean like the country should search for the oil? Yes. Or try to find resources? Yeah. Anything else? Other suggestions? Making NGO. Make our own NGO. What's the NGO going to do? Uh, education. Okay. So improve education and other things by using NGOs. We can see that in some countries, less developed countries, right? Anything else? Uh, making uh, more strict uh, laws and rules. Okay, so for corruption maybe and governance. Yes, not a problem with these rules. Uh, must be done uh, very often by interrupting all the issues. Yes, and also we can't have one policeman for every person, right? So even though we make laws and rules, people could still avoid them, right? So we need it, corruption, we need to change. We talked about before how can we change the culture of a country. So if most people uh, have a culture where they think it's okay to cheat or deceive people, then if we have a president, they're probably there, if you make just some random person president, they're also going to do the same thing, right? So I was a little bit surprised when I lived in Ecuador in South America. Everybody was blaming the president, always blaming the president. Oh, it's all the president's fault and the government is corrupt and so on. But perhaps they couldn't see from outside, but actually they were the same. In a small way, they were also doing the corrupt things. So if I put one of those people in to be the president, they're going to do the same thing as the president, right? So the problem I thought was the culture more than the individuals. The culture in South America was that in Ecuador, was a little bit, uh, has a higher corruption than other countries. So for example, if you want to be the bus driver, you don't need to have a driving license. <laughs> for example, you can pay some guy a bribe at the office and he can give you the bus driving certification. Then you can be a bus driver. One time I got the bus on Sunday morning, two bus drivers were having a race. <laughs> really dangerous. They were passing each other and racing on the road. It was quite scary. But in the end, I got where I was going very quickly. I thought it would take one hour, but it took just 20 minutes. <laughs> they missed a lot of stops, didn't pick up the people. They were just racing against his friend. Yes? Uh, can I have a question? Yes. Do you think we can make it like universally for all the countries? Because, as you just said, countries are individual and the cultures are different. Mm -hmm. So I don't think these things we're writing down can be applied like in general. I think you should take each country and make it individual. Yes. yes, so this is for countries which have low incomes and corruption problems. We can do this, right? There might be another country which is poor, not because of corruption, but because of another problem, right? So, uh, we have better laws and rules changing the culture in the country. We talked about how to create the culture in the company, but creating culture in the country is a little bit more challenging. Mainly, we can see there is a, usually there is a graph between education levels and corruption, in that if you have a high corruption, you may have lower education level. Higher education level, low corruption. It's just in general, right? Of course, there are highly educated people who are more corrupt, but we can see a general line, so if we also focus on education, it can also solve this uh, problem a little bit. Okay. Do you have any other suggestions for how to change the culture of a country? Can we like, strengthen the 
company farms to create more better facilities for the employees or make create employees. So for example, in Peru, they only pay the police officers three hundred dollars a month. So it's not enough salary. So sometimes they do they accept bribes from people because they they need the money, right? The government is not giving them a good enough salary. So we can increase the salary, give better conditions so that we don't have that problem, right? In the companies or the so on. There used to be in the Roman times they used to only promote extremely wealthy people to be government officials because they said they're the only people who don't need to accept bribes. What do you think about that argument? <laughs> we should only make very wealthy people into the important position because they don't need the money, so... No. You don't agree with that idea? No. They could still want more money? Yes. yes. So it was kind of an excuse in the Roman times, right? The Romans said, no, you can't promote him poor person because he'll take a bribe, he really needs the money. In the Roman times they didn't pay the politicians. You couldn't get any salary for being a politician. So basically only the rich people could be politicians. And on top of that they had to make uh, events for the people like games and festivals. Spend a lot of, they had to actually spend a lot of money for the privilege of being a politician. Right? So you're saying if we can increase the salary of the politicians and so on. I heard on the news today that one baseball player is getting paid $96 million for a six-year contract. But Barack Obama's total worth is just $6 million and he gets paid $600,000 or $700,000 a year, right? So maybe if we pay the president a little bit more, or the politicians, it might help a little bit, right? Or the policemen or so on. Any other suggestions? Hmm? I don't agree. You don't agree with that? No. Why not? Because they may, they may bother for the wrong motivation. Yes. You think people might just want a job as a politician just for money, not no, just change the world? No, in Slovakia this is very normal thing. Yes, totally. Mm. They go to have this job just because of the money and uh, political, how it's called, immunity. They, mm. they cannot be... Charged. Yeah, charged. Okay. They increase their salaries almost every month. Mm. So... Okay. So, and then we just need to reduce the salary for the sports stars <laughs> <laughs> on the other side. Okay, so any other ideas about how to improve the lower income countries? Okay, so the next, the last question for the moment is, uh, do you think that uh, this is linked to happiness? Having a good economy is linked to people's well-being or happiness. Discuss with your partner. Is having a good economy linked to people's uh, happiness or well-being? What do you think? Okay, so hands up, who thinks economic development is strongly linked to happiness and well-being? Who thinks there is no link between happiness, well-being and economic development? Who thinks there is some link between the economic development and happiness? So why do you think there is some link? Uh, for some people more money to bring happiness. For example, I'm more happy if I have more money. Okay. Uh, First time people no money, more happiness. Especially maybe in Africa, they say they're more happy than us from Europe. Mm -hmm. Even though they have no money. It depends on the country, on the people. Okay, so who said no link? Yes, why do you think there's no link? Well, I think there's different level of happiness. People have different 
and you just have to copy there. Mm -hmm. so, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We discussed before. One Russian, do you want to go to be in a prison camp in Siberia? You have to do slave labor in a prison camp in Siberia. Do you want to go there? Oh, but one day the guy got an extra potato in his soup, so he was very happy. But all evening he was very happy. But like I explained, we had the Sweet 16 on MTV. That's some. 16 year old daughter of a famous rapper had a party with 300 guests and castle and everything and then she was unhappy because her father didn't let her ride in the helicopter on the way. <laughs> so the whole day she was sad. <laughs> Is that what you mean? Yes. <laughs> similar. And similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? People they meet their basic need, then they want something else, they want something else, they want something else, right? So, uh, then let's discuss about these questions. So, the World Bank puts countries into different groups. High income, over $12,000. Middle income, $1,000 a year. Do you think middle income is $1,000 a year? Hmm? No? It's a good idea. Has anybody lived in any uh, poor country which where people earn less than $1,000 a year? Don't look at me. No? Has anybody visited any country like that? <laughs> hmm? I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> Have you visited any country? It's a good experience one day. When I used to live in Ecuador, maybe the average salary was $300 a month, so about $3,000 a year, so maybe middle income, right? or a little bit higher. But it shows you that, uh, like you said, you don't need that many material things actually in your life. People in Ecuador can live quite happily. The weather is, it's on the equator, the weather is very nice all year round, it's sunny. Right? They have a lot of fruit, the fruit is very cheap. Why if the house price is very cheap, they can buy a house for just thirty or forty thousand US dollars, fifty thousand US dollars, and so on. So it's a good experience to go there. After going there, I was less materialistic. I realized that I just need a car to get from point A to point B. So that's the main function of a car. I don't need to buy a very expensive car just for the image, right? There's not much difference between having a very cheap car and a very expensive car. But there is a big difference between not having a car and having a very cheap car, right? So, uh, anyway, there's a lot of people, you're quite lucky to live in the high income countries, right? In the middle income or low income. So we can have a look at the world. So just this part of the world is, is more than 12,000, right? These countries, a year. Uh, blue color, high income, okay? Low income. 1,000 or less is the red and the orange color we can see here. So, upper middle income, South America, here some low income countries here. So within the low income countries, there is a special group of 50 least developed countries. Okay? Also called transition economies. Transition economies. So 50 very poor uh, countries. Here are some islands uh, in Cambodia, Laos, and so on. Have you been to Cambodia or Laos? Yeah. No. You have? What did you think about Cambodia? Tell us something about Cambodia. <laughs> very hot. It's very hot. What about the economic development in Cambodia? Yeah. It's corrupt. War. There was a war before. Yeah. Recently. Okay. And in Central Africa. Okay, so or they also call Sub-Sahara Africa. This is the Sahara Desert, so Sub-Sahara Africa. Have you been to any countries apart from South Africa? Me? Hmm? <laughs> South Africa, Botswana, Namibia. Botswana? Yeah, Botswana. Hmm. And Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Yeah, somewhere around South Africa. So what about Zambia? Did you say Zambia? Yeah. What, Zambia is included here, so what was the economic development like in Zambia? Very low. Mm. 
more than South Africa and Botswana. Can you describe to us what it was like in Zambia? Uh, there, the black people in Zambia, they are more darker than South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> they smell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean about the econ economy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that nobody from Zambia is going to watch that video. Do you think three what? days in Zambia cannot describe all but this economy, bro? But it people smell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all. They don't make sure and stuff. So they didn't get the education about hygiene? Or they didn't buy the shampoo? <laughs> what about the city? Do they have a developed city? No. Just they live in rural yeah, areas? Small buildings and... Small villages. What are the houses like? Containers. Do you think people are happy? Very. Very happy. Are the people happy in Cambodia? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> also in uh, Ecuador, I went to the jungle. The Amazon. They have the Amazon jungle here between Brazil and Ecuador. So I went to the jungle. I met some native people, and they, for example, they had 13 children, so I visited one tribe, and, but they seemed very happy, especially the kids, because the kids didn't go to school, they just spent all day playing on the river, so they were the happiest kids I've seen, right? but the problem is, they don't have any professional medical care, so if they get some problem, they can die or get very sick, just they have the local medicine man, but he doesn't know much. He told me he knew the cure for AIDS, not to tell anybody about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't believe him. <laughs> for, for example, yes. But he said he didn't want the world to know too much attention, so he said don't tell anybody. So I hope he doesn't watch the video. <laughs> yes. So anyway, they had the problem with the healthcare, the education, the life expectancy. They died at the younger age, right? Uh, those kind of problems. <clears throat> so, uh, the main way we compare the economies is GDP per capita, usually at purchasing power parity. Do you understand PPP? No. <coughs> purchasing power parity means that uh, if I buy a Big Mac in Ireland, or if I buy a Big Mac in Korea, how much does it cost? So, if I make the exchange rate on Big Mac, one Big Mac in Ireland, do you understand Big Mac? Yes. Yeah. How much does it cost in Korea? Uh, lunch time in Korea, Big oh, Mac, that's uh, uh, 4,500 won. 4,500. In Ireland, it costs 4 euros 50. What should the exchange rate be between Korea and Ireland? Uh, hmm? One euro. One euro is? One thousand. One thousand one. According to this, right? If we look at the Big Mac, just Big Macs. Big Mac in Korea costs this, Big Mac in Ireland costs this. This should be the exchange rate. So this is using purchasing power of parity. We put the exchange rate at the cost of goods, not the market exchange rate. What is the market exchange rate for the euro and the Korean one? About 1,200 or 300 these days, right? This is the market rate. But so many things affect the market rate, and for example, Korea has an exporting economy, so their currency is undervalued against the yen, against the euro in the long term, over 20 or 30 years, right? China also has been accused of having an undervalued currency to promote their exports. So instead of using the market exchange rate, they use this exchange rate, based on the price of goods. How do they calculate the exchange rate? They find out how much does rice cost, how much does rent cost, how much do bicycles cost, how much does everything cost in Ireland, how much does everything cost in Korea, and then they make the exchange rate. This is purchasing power parity. So, in purchasing power parity, the exchange rate between Europe and Korea is more like one to one. Did you think things were cheap when you came to Korea? Mm, not really. Okay, sorry, it doesn't prove my theory. Compared to Denmark? But we don't have euros, so it's more. It depends. Mm. Like, uh, 
Most of the things are more expensive in Denmark, but fruit and vegetable, what I want, is more expensive here. Okay, but apart from fruit and vegetables, things are more expensive in Denmark. Yes. yes. So there you go, right? It's the way less expensive in the Czech Republic. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So Denmark doesn't use the euro, but its currency is, is tied to the euro, right? Yes. It follows the euro. So uh, this is taking the price level differences into account, right? This is a common standard of international prices. Prices for foodstuffs, rent, haircuts, movie tickets, legal fees. Haircut in Korea cost me just man one, but in Ireland it costs uh, 12 euros, right? So more than ship, oh man, oh chan man. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Do you think I should get a more expensive haircut? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? No comments? No. How much was your haircut? <laughs> How much was your haircut? One amount of money. Mine was cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Whose haircut is better? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Whose haircut is better? <laughs> no comments? <laughs> you must think his one is better then. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, haircuts are cheaper in Korea. So we use this unit of accounting. It's called GDP at PPP. So is PPP uh, somehow linked to BMI? BMI, Body Mass Index. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Big Mac Index. Ah, uh, Big Mac Index. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the Big Mac Index is kind of a fun way of doing the PPP. It's not. Uh, it doesn't have any official recognition, but it's just a fun way because the Big Mac has a lot of things. It has labor cost of uh, minimum wage, right? It has uh, lettuce, it has bread, it has meat, okay? It has all those things, so people just use the Big Mac sometimes to compare purchasing power parity. So, in fact, if I earn the same amount of salary in Korea or in Ireland, then I can afford more things in Korea. So. <clears throat> then we have an urban-rural divide. So the richer parts of the world are more urban, the poorer parts of the world are more rural. So the Americas is a very urbanized society. 80% or more of the population live in urban areas. Africa, only 25% of the population live in urban areas. So on this map we can see uh, up to 80% of people living in urban areas here. And again, so we can see one decider here. We can also write down urban living in urban areas or living in rural areas. <coughs> so, have you ever heard of Mal? Maltese, Maltesian idea or theory. A guy called John Maltese in the 18th century, he said that the population of the world is going to grow a lot and then we'll keep growing food, but eventually we won't have enough food. And then the population will, will have to go down, there may be some war and people will, uh, standard of living will go down. A little bit like these days we have Mad Max movie or some science fiction movie like that, right? usually involving nuclear war. But he didn't know about the Industrial Revolution. That was before the Industrial Revolution. So do you know the Industrial Revolution? Yes. England is very proud of the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> when they had the Olympics in London in 2012, all of the show was about the Industrial Revolution. It was the big time of the British Empire. <laughs> what can you tell me about the Industrial Revolution? The steam engine was the biggest invention. They invented that the steam can move the things around. So first they made the mill for making the bread, right, with the steam. Then eventually they made the train powered by steam. So the steam engine was the big invention. Also they invented the telecommunications, right, telephone and radio and so on, electricity. Okay. So the Industrial Revolution 
uh, stopped Maltesian's theory. So we, but he was right about population growth. The population was one billion in the 1800s, and now it's seven billion. So the future population growth on the planet is going to be in urban areas. The proportion of the world living in urban areas is going to be about 60% by 2030, 67% by 2050. Do you want to live in a city or the countryside? Hmm? Hands up who wants to live in the countryside? Who wants to live in the city? Is there any option to live in a town? <laughs> <laughs> yes, town is countryside. In Europe, you know, town is <laughs> okay, if it doesn't have more than 100,000 people, maybe it's an urban area, it's not, maybe yes, not. It's not 100,000 people. <laughs> mm. Usually, a hundred, or more than 100,000 could be a city, usually. Okay. Depends. So, prosperous, healthy and resilient cities are going to be a core challenge of sustainable development. <clears throat> so, the next factor is income inequality in, with, within the country. Have you heard of the Gini coefficient? Yes. No. What do you know about the Gini coefficient? Um, it's index one or zero. Mm -hmm. So many country index this time, and mm -hmm. uh, zero means uh, rich people and poor people uh, are equal. Uh, equal. Mm -hmm. uh, and one is so they not equal. Yes. Great. So, we have to remember that if we look at a country like China, 20 years ago their Gini coefficient was very low, they were very equal. Everybody was equally poor, right? So some people would say that about the communist system, right? Everybody is equal but they are equally poor, that makes some joke, right? So China had a lot of economic growth, so the Gini coefficient got worse, there was more inequality. But is that a bad thing? No. A lot of people in China came out of poverty and earned a lot of money and now there's more difference, right? So we just have to take into account, think about the score for the Gini coefficient. Okay, what does it mean? So, uh, let's have a look at the scores. So, the green color is the lower Gini coefficient, we can see Iceland. The Nordic countries, Sweden, Norway, Germany, Germany. Again, Denmark is leading in this area, right? Of course. Yes, usually leading in those kind of things, right? <laughs> what about Korea? Korea is okay here. Korea is better than Ireland, in fact. Ireland is here. <laughs> you can see in Europe, Ireland and the UK is a little bit closer to the US, uh, in that they have more Anglo-Saxon system, a little bit more uh, like the U.S. has a very high inequality. So in the U.S. there are a lot of very wealthy people. Do you watch any U.S. TV shows? What U.S. TV show do you watch? Friends? Do you watch Friends? Sex in the City? Do you watch Sex in the City? SCI? NCIS? They have a lot of crime shows in Korea. Do Korean people really like crime shows? Crime dramas? Yes. 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 I'm surprised. <laughs> so anyway, in the, in, the, in the US drama or movie, usually you don't see many poor people. So I was surprised when I went to the US because I saw there were a lot of poor people living in the city center uh, with no job and uh, quite bad situation. They don't have as much social help for people in the US as in Europe. So, although they have a lot of very rich people in the U.S., they also have a lot of very poor people. So, the inequality is very high. Okay, Korea, not too bad, right? You have some more social services than in the U.S. Uh, we can see South America has very high inequality. Uh, in income, 20% of the people are very wealthy, 80% of the people are very poor. This is also related to the history. Uh, the Spanish conquered South America, so mainly the descendants, direct the descendants of the Spanish people, is mainly the wealthy people. Then you have some mixture of the native people with Spanish people, 
kind of in between our poor and then the native people like I visited in the jungle is uh, quite poor. And then in America you have a lot of immigrants. So you can see the OECD average here, 0 0.31. And we can see that the United States is near the bottom here. Slovenia, Slovak Republic, Czech Republic, Norway, Denmark, they are very equal uh, distribution of income. That's not true. Hmm? Sorry, that's not, that's not, that's absolutely not You don't true. agree? Late 2000s? Denmark, it is true, but Czech Republic, no way. Why, why do you think it's not true? Because I used to live there for 18 years, so... So, I mean, why? What are the reasons? There are big gaps between the incomes of people. Uh, okay. So, anyway, Gini is an Italian economist who makes this research, right? So, uh, why do we have some inequality? In the US, for example, they had a slave, slaves before, indigenous populations in the, like I mentioned, in Australia, in, in uh, South America. Access to education. Uh, when I was in Ecuador, I was teaching a guy who worked for a top company there, just doing some private lesson for English, right? He told me that on purpose the government doesn't spend money on education because they don't want people to be educated. Because if the people are educated, then they'll realize that they're living in an extremely unequal country. Maybe they'll start to do something about it. So Ecuador has some of the lowest spending on education. But that was when I was there, they had a different type of government. Nowadays I think the government has changed, so it has improved. Right? But if the people have low education, for example when I watched the news, the news was very biased, always biased, very biased news. And I, I was laughing at the news because it was so biased. But if you don't have the education, you don't understand that the news is very biased, right? This news is being made by the, some uh, rich individual who owns the TV station, and he wants to promote his political candidate. So he just makes fun of the other candidate and promotes his own candidate every day on the news. A little bit like Fox News. Do you ever watch Fox News? <laughs> In the US, they just constantly make fun of Barack Obama, right? And try to promote their candidate. But if you don't have the education, then you don't understand that's happening. You think it's all true, right? Some people think, oh, Fox News is just a very impartial and fair news station. Obama is useless. <laughs> <laughs> and the Republican Party is the be much better, right? That's fair reporting. But if they have the education, they understand that George Bush's cousin owns the Fox News, so, or the Fox media station. So, of course, George Bush's cousin is going to promote uh, his political party. So we have the urban-rural divide. Uh, discrimination. In the US we can see there's a big problem at the moment. Uh, did you hear about the problem with the police in the US? Uh, what happened there? The police killed the suspect. They don't judge the court. So the police killed some innocent suspect, right? Doing very small, nothing really, yes. right? But they killed, they killed, shot them because they ran away, or they did that. And people said it's because of racial discrimination. And they found out that they're picking up more African Americans than uh, other people. So in the U.S., they have this uh, problem. We talked before about solving discrimination. We said maybe we can make some quotas. In the police force in the U.S., they're talking about changing the culture. They want to change the culture of the police force. Was the suspect black? Hmm? Was the suspect black? Yes, in all, in all cases. So there were some riots in the U.S. In Baltimore, they broke the shop windows and burned cars, those kind of things. You didn't see on the news? Yes. You did see or you didn't see? Yeah. Do you watch Fox? Do you watch Fox News? Yes, I do. <laughs> Maybe that's why you do this. <laughs> so, uh, then measuring the well being, we have the Human Development Index. So, let's look at the homepage. Have you heard of the Human Development Index? Chris, 
Yes? Before we move on to that, I, I'm, I'm just look, wondering whose sport is it to make the problem of discrimination? Uh, the discrimination problem has historical roots, right? In the US before they had some slavery. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the even though they came out of slavery, they didn't have the same opportunity or access to education, right? And uh, we shouldn't stereotype or discriminate against a person. A person. It may be that other people are of that same race have some trait, but it doesn't mean that an individual person is going to have that trait, right? That's stereotyping or racism. It's Just not. Mm. It's not because I'm Korean. Mm. Even I'm black. I think I'm gonna admit <laughs> <laughs> admit everything. Mm. If they criticize that I am black, mm. I don't care. I will admit that because it's my fate. So I don't think that we have to try our best to improve the problem of discrimination. I think they have to admit that. <laughs> so you come from South Africa, right? That yeah. ha that had apartheid. In South Africa, they used to have apartheid, mm -hmm. where they tell, tell us what is apartheid, explain. I'm not yet. Uh, in the past, they used to, uh, one vote from one white person was worth 50 votes uh, Yeah, of one black person. They couldn't work in the government offices, that kind yeah, of thing. Even the rugby team, they didn't have any yes. colored players, mm -hmm. even though there were a high percentage of the population. Mm -hmm. So, how is South Africa doing nowadays? All high positions are black. <laughs> you think it's gone the opposite way? They're yes, discriminating yes. against the whites now? Uh -huh. yeah, that's true. That's true. Hmm? That's true. Mm -hmm. White people cannot survive in South Africa because nowadays, so, you know, these blacks are going off. <laughs> so, what's your, what's your suggestion to solve the problem? Yeah. What's your suggestion to solve that problem? Um, you know, we were like trying our best to improve the problem of discrimination, but these days, black people nowadays, I don't think we have to try. I, I don't think we have to help them because it's their fate. So if they go up, you know, deep inside in their heart, you know, they still have, you know, what can I say? Resentment? Slave, no, I cannot say, say slavery. What can I say? <laughs> Inferiority complex? Yes, so they don't keep, uh, they don't keep back our grace. No. Of course not me, someone who helped them. Yeah. But do you feel it's unfair yes. if you're discriminated against? Yes. Then you want to change that situation, right? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Yes? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> Anyway, I don't think you can say that discrimination is okay, right? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, you can't really make that argument, right? <laughs> if, if somebody is different, mm. right? And yeah. you can't say that because he is whatever, then he has to be the same. Everybody is an individual, right? So we can't judge people based on their race or their and religion or gender or anything so like that. You what? treat everyone the same? Yes. Of no. Course. Really? You don't. Yes. Who says so? Who says so? Yeah, I don't know. You don't treat everybody the same. No, I, I think I'm out of class. I'm racist. <laughs> so hopefully we can change that. Anyway, you know, this is ethics class. So Marty, I have. It's good that you came to the ethics class, right? You came to the right place. <laughs> so, can you try to justify your opinion? Why you think it's okay to treat some group of people differently than another uh, one? I don't think it's okay, but... Good, it's okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm racist anyway. <laughs> so, you 
you're you're conscious that it's not it is okay. You know that it's it's not okay to do that, but you still want to do that. No justification. Just how it is. Okay, so I think you two guys need some extra class. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> extra activity. Yes. If you want to write an essay about hard titles, you know, present to me next week. <laughs> you can write an essay about Balkans, Balkans, Balkans. What about gypsy problem? In Europe, also everybody has this problem they, in their own country. So in Ireland, the UN Committee of Human Rights says that Irish people are racist against gypsies. Everyone is racist against gypsies. Yeah, actually, EU to sue the Czech Republic mm. because all so Czechs are racist mm. against gypsies. So. Yeah, so we need to change, right? No, don't be racist against gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how, how big problem is in Ireland, but all the politicians who say it should be equal with gypsies, I would recommend them to visit Gypsy Village for one day, yeah. and then oh. they can decide mm. again. But I think these people from the human racism. rights communities, <laughs> 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 they already visited the gypsy villages. They already, that's part of their job, they have to do that. Yeah, but what kind of gypsy villages? Like the real gypsy village. Mm. So the, I guess the point is, there are some gypsies who do uh, dishonest things because maybe they don't have the education. But if there could be one gypsy who is very nice and person, an honest person, so discrimination means we shouldn't be say that just because the other gypsies are like that, this person is like that. But there is an idea, if you have a track of rotten potatoes, mm. you don't search for one, for one good potato to say there is one potato mm. in, the, Martin. in the track. It's yes. just bro. <laughs> I admit that. <laughs> I mean, try to live in, no, in, the, in the same. Tr try to live with them in the same area. That's the thing. Yes, yeah, she so has. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, France, Fra Ireland got into trouble, or France got into trouble for deporting gypsies who came from another country to do some begging or some other activity. Some, sometimes they do some criminal activity. Then they're eating our dogs. I mean, they're stealing dogs from our gardens and eating them. In Ireland, even they had a big fight in the local area. Some. Gypsies were living in one house, and all the local community had a big fight with the gypsies, right, about something. But uh, we can't, in, we should be better to the gypsies. We should try to help them and integrate them into society, uh, make them feel included, and make. Did you know that 200,000 years ago, people's brains were almost the same as today? When they look at the skull 200,000 years ago, the skull was almost the same as today. So, if you took somebody from 200,000 years ago and put them into the modern schooling, they can do just as well as you. Can you believe that? So, you can't say that people's brains are different or they have some different whatever. If, we, if you educate the gypsy children properly, then of course they are going to be just the same as us. We tried, we tried integration programs. I'm from the part of Slovakia where we have almost more gypsies than Slovakians. Mm. We tried integration programs, and mm. the, re the result was that actually Slovakians had to move out, and they had to leave the, the village or the town because mm. of the gypsies. They tried to put like Slovakians. I'm not going to say white people. They put Slovakians in the same class with gypsies, and then actually the level of the classroom went down. Because uh, in the first in the first year, mm. normal normal students they they learn how to read and how to write. Mm. Gypsy people they were learning how to go to toilet and how to use soap and how to wash their head. So of course that the Slovakians were this integration program was actually hurting them and their level of intelligence. So very very serious. <laughs>